the internet podcast. If you've reached us, congratulations, you've reached the end of the internet. My name is Gonzalo, I will be your host today, joined as always by my co-host and best friend Marcus. We are going to be discussing popular culture and the impact it's had on us as humans, as consumers, as friends, um, as adults, and how it's shaped the people that we've become. This was supposed to be the topic for the first episode, and we felt that it was a good launching point to a podcast that's primarily going to be about this sort of thing. However, Halloween was right around the corner and we just could not pass up the opportunity to talk about all the spooky shit which uh again we had a lot of fun discussing and thank you everyone who listened but uh this episode is for all intents and purposes the first episode it's about why we're gonna do this podcast why we are the way we are why we love the things that we love um it's exciting and we had a lot of fun recording it i will say that again with our growing pains you will notice a couple of hefty edits Uh, there are a couple of cuts that are obvious and when you get there smile you know that they were coming we're gonna keep trying to get better at this Uh, please bear with us i am just learning the software i will improve i do believe that (laughs) also um if you guys have any stories or information or anecdotes that you would like to share with us please feel free to comment leave them down below this video we'd love to hear from you guys we'd love to know what kind of shaped you what were the things that stood out because obviously marcus and i are just two people in this vast audience of fandom so we would love to hear what you guys thought um some things that kind of like shaped you that really got to you that helped make you into the people that you are um were they cartoons was it a specific video game a line from a movie you know uh anything like that we'd love to hear uh please if you can like share subscribe to the channel and also if you want to reach us we have an email address you can email us at end of the internet pod at gmail.com that's all one word and uh, we can take questions there we can you know answer them on the show we really hope that you guys enjoy this episode it's a lot shorter by about half then the previous episode we're going to try to keep these within the hour hour 20 minute range but they are conversations and it's one of my favorite things about podcasts so without further delay uh here's our discussion about popular culture and the impact it's had on us and what it's meant to us we hope you guys enjoyed this episode All right, so today's conversation is going to be on the importance of popular culture in our lives from a young age up to now. I don't think that we're always going to do a from childhood all the way to now kind of conversation, but this one was supposed to be the topic for the first episode, and we decided to try our hand at a Halloween-themed scare (laughs) episode that we had a lot of fun recording, so we ended up putting that up first. Uh, we got it done for Halloween. Uh, thank you, everyone, for listening. Um, yes, thank you. But this one was supposed to be our first proper episode, so uh, we wanted to talk about why popular culture has been so paramount and present in our life, and what it's meant to us, how it's shaped us, and how it's kind of, I guess, something that's surprising over the years is that I just kind of felt that everybody kind of treated this stuff the same way. Even my mom was infected by movies and songs to a great degree. Uh, my dad was in a band before he was in prison. All sorts of, you know, everybody seems affected by it. And then as I've gotten older, I've met a lot of people that could give a shit. <laughs> you know, yeah, they don't know who directed Arrival or, you know, like they don't care who Aaron Sorkin is or, you know, they don't yeah. give a shit what the multiverse is in DC continuity. And it's interesting, and it's, it, it makes me... There are times where I feel like I've spent too much of my life thinking about this stuff, that it matters too much to me. And then there are the times where like, well, fuck all that. Like, I, I, I like what I like, and, you know, I'm into the things that I'm into. Yeah, absolutely. And it, it, it occurred to me that you and I get along really well because we're both similar in that regard. But it's fun to kind of, like, navigate the waters of society where people aren't necessarily like that. And you go, oh, maybe we do have something to give something to offer you know like some people specialize in quantum mechanics some people specialize in sports and some people specialize in popular culture you know so um and it always shapes the people the things that you obsess over seem to really shape you and popular culture has shaped both of us 
Absolutely. Um, so what are some of the things that I guess um, popular culture has done for you? Uh, what does it mean to you? When you hear the okay, when you hear the expression popular culture, what do you think of? I think of all the cool shit, like all the absolute cool stuff in the world, movies, music, video games, comic books, fictional, great works of fictional writing, like pop culture is it's just that, like fucking D and D tabletop, you know, like any kind of conversation. Like clothing that, trends. Um, see, for me, favorite. yeah, I mean, I think I'm, I'm sure that those are maybe a part of most people's conversations. That has no bearing on me. I'm a I'm a buy my shoes at Walmart kind of guy. Like, <laughs> you know, I yeah. don't. It, it's never really hit me, but but I understand that it is a thing. But for me, it's not. It's it's just it's those mediums, you know. Like when I hear pop culture, that's what I'm thinking of, you mm -hmm. know. Um, entertainment. You know, okay. stuff like that. Um, growing up as a kid, I never was mindful of pop culture. It, it didn't mean anything to me. I didn't care, like, about anything. But I knew what I liked. And, you know, I remember some of my first memories were, of course, you know, the Saturday morning cartoons and stuff. You know, He-Man, Transformers, all that good stuff. And I didn't realize that even at that age I was entering a realm that had, like, or maybe it wasn't as defined yet, but that was going to become what we know of it today, you know? Mm -hmm. um, I think we were lucky enough to be a part of a fantastic generation that got to experience a lot of really badass stuff, you know? Yeah, I definitely agree. Um, you know, from fantastic movies, music, you know, like, we got to experience a lot of creation mm -hmm. of, you know, stuff that people are mimicking today, you know? And I think that's pretty awesome. Okay, so we had a small edit there. Um, you know, Marcus was saying, or was about to expand on what popular culture means to him and how it defined him. Continue, sir. Well, I, I guess what I really wanted to kind of talk about was something that you mentioned in the very beginning about how we grew up loving all of this awesome pop culture stuff and that there are some people out there that just, they don't pay attention to it or it's not that big of a deal it doesn't control their life it's not a defining moment for them and that's really weird to me too mm -hmm. so the whole point of my ramble which was a horrible ramble but i should be on point from here on out as he proceeds to ramble <laughs> <laughs> shut up <laughs> um is that right there like growing up the way we grew up and absorbing all of this stuff you know, growing up with comic books, playing with action figures, Saturday morning, cartoons. Saturday morning cartoons, you know, watching badass movies. I feel blessed. I actually feel bad for people who don't get to experience those things or grew up experiencing those things. And, you know, when someone doesn't know an actor in a movie or a director, you know, from a movie or a series or a writer and don't get me wrong I am NOT a person who is an encyclopedia I am NOT a personal Wikipedia for a lot of cool fact-checking stuff as you guys could tell from the last podcast but there are things that I know there are things that I love and they all always go back to pop culture video games especially you know cartoons and movies and I actually feel bad for people who who don't have that in their life it really actually breaks my heart um and it's it's just so defining but yes yeah, so we I, I don't i don't ever feel bad for people it's just it's so interesting that humans are more diverse than i used to give credit i really dig the kind of like oh someone is super into books and they don't give a shit who wrote sunshine you know <laughs> like, yeah they, they just don't care it's just not into their 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 purview and i really 
like learning more about people like that. I really enjoy meeting people like that because I don't know why it, it comforts me more than it used to. When I was younger, it used to kind of either surprise the crap out of me or it would make me wish that they were in my sweaty little club. But <clears throat> now it's just, it's really cool. It's real interesting that it doesn't, I guess, hook people the way it hooks me. But it makes me happy that I'm part of this club. Like, I get to talk to you about things like this, and I get to share with a handful of friends. And, you know, when you meet someone that's like, oh, oh yeah, I, I know who wrote that, or, oh, I've, I've seen that movie, yeah. Um, it, yes, it it's, does. It's really cool. It's like, it's like a shorthand. I remember a friend of mine had uh, dated a gentleman who drove a specific car, and whenever he would see another person driving the same model they would like throw a sign at each other you know or like point at each other yeah. like yeah you know like Subaru you're drivers. in the in club yeah 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 and they didn't even know each other but yeah. just like hey you know um and that makes us something to each other the things that we all like and share um which I think is really cool so when you find somebody else that's as into this nerdy shit that we're into yeah you form fast bonds but that's not the end all be all of human interaction and I really dig that. Like, so popular culture to me has helped define who I am, the things I like, the people that I like, the way that I navigate romantic and non-romantic relationships, um, the things that I say, the cadence with which I speak. Um, there are things that I say in my day to day that are lines from movies that nobody knows that I just have repurposed into my vocabulary. I do that all and, the time. Yeah, it's just, I'm saying it to someone and they're like, oh, okay, you know, he, he said a thing to me just as a human, but in my head, I know that if you were to highlight all the things from my speech of the day, you would annotate them and it'd be like, lost in translation, Akira, uh, you know, um, Batman, Long Halloween, Killing Joke, you know? <laughs> like yeah, all, yeah, like, yeah. Clerks, High Fidelity, <laughs> all these things that make up how I speak and how I am. The way I view the world, I think you're right in that we were lucky and born into this specific time frame to where we would obsess over certain movies and TV shows because we only had one. So like we didn't have so many channels on cable. We didn't have um, the internet to watch everything that's ever been produced. We would go to the video store and rent stuff. Or we would record stuff off of TV on our VHS players. Um, our VCRs <laughs> have to make have to make mixtapes off of with cassette with the radio, players yeah. off of the radio. So we had a handful of things that we really loved, and we would just listen to them incessantly and enjoy them all the time. So then we slowly became obsessed with them. You know, we knew yeah, them absolutely. front yeah. to back. And I think that is kind of what shaped this kind of dinner. Like Kevin Smith uh, was instrumental in this when Clerks came out. There wasn't a lot of popular movies or TV shows that were really talking about fiction in a very sophisticated way. Mm -hmm. And to me, whenever I think of popular culture, I think of really smart people talking intelligently about movies yes, and comics that's, and that's things 100%. that don't matter. Like, you know, like, what, what, is, what is the population like in a world with monsters? Yeah. You know, like, we had touched a bit on the last episode... Like, what is, we went in deep on The Purge, you know? Like, well, what is that universe like? What is the world like, you know? The, what would the world be like if a Superman actually existed? You know, that to me is popular culture, like. that That's that's fantastic, and I change all my answers, and I, I now tack my, <laughs> myself onto that answer, because that's 100% that's correct. The idea of taking something that somebody wrote, that somebody created, a fictional story, a fictional universe, a fictional world, and then having some outsiders really put like it, that into real life implications you know mm -hmm. and like really dissect it because the thing is i think when popular culture really hits its stride is when people can do that and it starts to make sense yeah. like the world becomes more real versus you know there's times where someone can dissect something and it starts to not make as much sense but it's like eh, you know it's, it's, like, just that, a show. it's like that meme of charlie day like, yes i'm trying to explain something <laughs> yeah all yeah with the, with the red string and mm -hmm. all that craziness yeah it's exactly that like i love when you can do that i love when you can take a universe like i think one of the reasons why dark knight to me was such a fantastic movie or even batman begins because you took these fictional writings and you were able to kind of compact them 
into almost a perfectly like oh that could happen story you know what i mean and that's so freaking cool but like like we were touching on the idea of how we were growing up like where do you think where do you think that came from like why were we so lucky (laughs) to grow up that way because i knew people i had friends quote unquote who didn't have a ton of action figures and they would come over to my house and like whoa you have like the entire (laughs) he-man set and i'm like yeah like the implication being like oh you're a big fucking loser you know but it wasn't they were they i almost felt that they were like i want to go to my buddy's house he has all these toys i don't i have two yeah and it's like oh because your mom and dad were forcing you to play baseball that sucks you know what i mean i got to draw i I think that's a a big part of it is that we are both <clears throat> we were the babies of our family, right? You're the youngest of yes. your siblings. I'm the youngest of mine. Shut up. So we got to... <laughs> um, our parents were maybe a tad bit more lenient on us and allowed us to have time to think, time to imagine. And I had, like, this hodgepodge collection of toys, you know? Yeah. I had a couple of shadow figures that would <laughs> fight with my He-Man and G.I. Joe and TMNT and stuff. But it was... So so much fun to kind of sit in a room and think about these universes and try and have them collide and being afforded the time to do that. Uh, I think that was what helped us fall in love with this stuff and why it shaped us the way it has because we spent so much time with it. You know, I imagine it's when I think or I, I listen to deeply religious people talk about the way that a holy book or doctrine of faith has shaped their life i can it, it, it there's a, a hint of familiarity because it's like oh that's what that's what comics do for me yeah it's like oh i get 100%. you i get what you you know like why you're so fanatical because you've you're immersed in this thing so completely that it's woven into the fabric of you so i get the obsession <laughs> you know I, um not to sound like a complete and total fucking douchebag but i think about the idea of like pop culture and and fictional stories and all these things and how they shaped me and i could probably i could probably pin out a hundred things that shaped me from pop culture but some of the handful of things are like something as simple as watching thriller every halloween you know that that hit two things for me as a kid growing up watching thriller every halloween two major things always popped up one michael jackson was a werewolf I loved werewolves. I don't know if it's a chicken or the egg thing, which one came first. Did Michael Jackson help me fall in love with werewolves or did I already like them? And two, zombies. I absolutely adore zombies, you know? So that's one of those things where it's like, hey, I get to watch this awesome music video with this awesome song and there's a werewolf in it and there's zombies. And it just, it fed into these things that I like, you know? So it's it's one of those situations where so much of who i am i can literally think a lot of pop culture stuff you know a lot of stories a lot of because they you know you hear stories about what the reason why i said i don't want to sound like a douchebag is it's like these you know stories that you picked up from the bible or greek mythology and all these tales and these learning experiences or you know this um what do they call them the um the lessons learned in a story you know it's like oh there's a morality lesson here like yeah. all those things that people have picked up throughout history in the world like that's the same shit going on with you know movies music and and shows and all these things like it's the same things i picked up you know i learned i think half of the lessons i learned and why i can be such a good person i picked up from shit like batman you know what i mean yeah, like yeah. the same thing like watching old he-man you know, at the very end of the episodes and they have a you know like a psa and yeah, it was like gi joe and gi joe would have their psas at the end and i would i would connect to them because a it was a character i really dug yeah talking about this thing it's like don't light a match in a forest yeah you'll burn everything down you don't know? litter you piece of shit <laughs> yeah um and there's there's just so much from that that made me who i am and then i find this guy over here sitting across from me who was the same like we were cut from the same cloth it was it's weird to me the way he embraces the idea of there being a um the difference with other people and like liking it and accepting it it was weird for me to know that there weren't people like that out there like what do you mean there's not another person like me out there you know all my cousins were pretty much in the same kind of boat they like they had action figures but there were just certain things that were more important to them like a lot of my cousins did 
play sports and baseball and stuff like that. Um, and then there's nothing wrong with that. There is yeah. no right or wrong answer here, internet, I promise. But when as I was growing up, my thing was all of this stuff, which I would eventually come to know as pop culture. Yeah. And it's just it's we it was weird growing up knowing that there was someone out there who didn't know something as simple as who, who Lionel is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, yeah, like something like as simple as that or you know, or or I remember we we would play toys and one of my cousins would make up like some stupid shit. Like he would make up really weird stuff that didn't fit with a character and it would drive me nuts because I was like, That's that character wouldn't say that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Or he wouldn't do that. And they were like, yeah, yeah, but I mean, I'm playing with them. And it's like, yeah, you're playing with them wrong. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it, yeah. and there's, it, I was a child, but it's like, no, I, there's a thing there that you have to abide by. And I guess it, it's interesting to know that there were people like that. And then, of course, the internet has made the world so much more smaller. Like, to know that there's, everyone listening to this podcast probably knows what I'm talking about. And then it's funny because there are people who are like, hey, you should listen to this podcast. And be like, I don't want to listen to that. That's those people. Those yeah. people who didn't grow up the same way we did. Like, it's just really interesting. But it, it, it messes me up. I, I don't like it. <laughs> One of my favorite things, the, the way that like pop culture has been a keystone part of my life, is that it has granted me time to exist outside of the real world. Absolutely. As a kid, I remember playing Super Castlevania Four which is the Castlevania for the Super Nintendo when it came out. And the lore is like every hundred years, Dracula's castle, you know, reemerges. And I remember, you know, pretending that it was the 100th year and I could see like a blood moon rise and, you know, like there were bats everywhere that night for some reason, you know, inexplicably. And <laughs> just kind of getting caught in that and being somewhere else as a kid. And then as I've grown up, you go into a movie theater or you read um, a book or a uh, watch a long you binge a series on netflix or whatever you're lost to this story for x amount of time and it pulls you away from the troubles of your life but it doesn't necessarily make you forget about your troubles which is nice you can kind of you slowly start to apply this scenario with your own and they kind of meld together and i think that's what kind of draws most people and i think people talk about like the casual audience I think everybody loves stories. I think humans love to tell stories to each other and humans love to hear stories. So everyone loves stories. It's like, do you like books or do you like movies or manga or whatever? But like, we all like fucking stories, you know? Entertain us and get our heads up. And that's that's something that I think has helped shape me why I like to draw, why I like to write, why I like to discuss these things, why I like to sit in a room with you or my friends and talk about why Cade 6 is the way he is or you know what they really meant like why was April O'Neil wearing that yellow jumper or you know anything yeah. um that's interesting and then spilled like we had talked about Pet Cemetery and how there are things that this story is about this but the story is also really about this and you start to see the world differently you accept people you know um when you grow up and you're tiny you don't get to meet a lot of people outside of your immediate family and watching tv shows and stuff I was watching a cartoon as fucking weird as toxic avengers and oh then ninja God. turtles and swamp thing and stuff you see the, the green muck monsters and but they're the heroes and you're like we can all be heroes you know yeah, like, and, and, and yes. it kind of uh, it helps erode racism i think and biases that the world may want you to have or that they might reinforce i think pop culture is good at that it also fails a lot at that too yes, <laughs> like it does. inclusion is not the strong suit of popular culture but when we were thinking about like anthropomorphic animals or creatures that teach you morality, that's pretty cool, you know? Yeah. And a furry isn't that weird to me, you know, <laughs> growing up yeah. watching street sharks or fucking, you know, SWAT cats or whatever. So I um, love SWAT cats. You... <laughs> I, I was all about SWAT I was like, cats. I, that, uh, SWAT cats was the, like the last cartoon that I loved as a, you know, like as a young person. <laughs> yeah, because it was like, okay, two cool cats mm -hmm. flying in a jet. I was a big fan of Top Gun. So. I was, cats. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, best friends. Right. Um, yeah, like yeah, so it's well cats are yeah. fucking awesome. <laughs> and it's funny, like when we think of like popular culture now, um, I would say that memes are now a part of oh, popular he, culture. Like he, that is yeah. now a thing that we all kind of like this common ground is like, Oh, did you see this meme of X, Y, and Z? And we chuckle and laugh at it and high five over it. People stuff. were dressing up as memes for Halloween. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's that, been going on for the past couple of years, which is yeah pretty cool you know i, I dig it um yeah and um 
I enjoy how popular culture shapes society, but is also shaped by society. Yeah, I think that's really cool. Um, a lot of give and take. Mm-hmm. Uh, art imitating life and vice versa. But <clears throat> I've spent hours and days and years of my life devoted to fictional universes, and I don't know that it's made me a better man, but it hasn't made me a worse one. Oh, it's made you a, fantas- <laughs> it's made you a fantastic man, let me tell you. Uh, no, I, I think the same thing. I You know, sometimes I think... I have those little moments where I was like, man, did I spend way too much time reading this thing or spend way too much time watching these movies or spend way too much time playing these games. And and then I take that step back and I go, who gives a fuck? You know, (laughs) like who cares? I enjoy it, you know, and I have friends who enjoy it and I can talk to them about it. And it does. And maybe this is the wrong mentality, but you do kind of draw a line in the sand sometimes. It's like, nah, if you're with me, you're on this side. <laughs> and if you're not, you're on that side. And I'm going to keep in my eyes on you. You know, there is there is kind of that weird... And I guess it goes back to like that fanboy, fandom, maybe even toxic fucking mentality. But the idea of... Like you were saying, you'd be walking down the street. like, And, that, and I've done this. And I've seen someone with like a Legend of Zelda shirt on. And it's just a Triforce. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, that's badass. Like, great shirt. Yeah, it's like, yeah. oh, thanks, man. Appreciate it. Yesterday, or not yesterday, uh, last week I was at work. I work in a hospital. And someone texted me, and my text is when you find a treasure chest in Legend of Zelda. Mm-hmm. Link to the past, to be more specific. And a nurse who seemed to be at least 40, 45, looked and she was like, was that Zelda? <laughs> Is that your phone? And I go, yes, it was. And she was like, that's awesome. And I was like, dude. And, and immediate, there was an immediate like, like, whatever you need, ma'am, <laughs> you let me know. I'll go get it for you. Like, yeah. done. We were we were besties now. I don't even know your name. I don't need to know your name. Mm-hmm. We know this. So I think that's what, as bad as it can be when it comes to like separation and segregation of like, oh, you don't know that? You know, mm-hmm. fuck off. There's also that really cool, like, you're the, you're, an, you're an insider. You yeah. know what I know. That's mm-hmm. awesome. Yeah, I get that sometimes at, at work or, you know, out in the street or whatever. Someone will say a line and then you finish it and it's like, hey! <laughs> you know, which it's is the best Yeah, it's, a, it's an awesome feeling. Or like you said, like, I, I, I have a Joker tattoo on my forearm and a lot of times people will see it and be like, hey, man, nice tattoo. And it's one of two things. One, they like tattoos or B, they like the Joker, you know? Yeah. Um, or C, they're both. They're, they're both, yeah. And they yeah, love yeah. you. Mm-hmm. Um, which is really cool, you know, it's like, it's some common ground and uh, I feel like there are a lot of different agendas looking to separate us and take us off of common ground but there's so much common ground out there you know like there's so many people like throw a rock and hit someone who likes Batman you know Mm -hmm. you'll throw a rock and hit someone who loves Fleetwood Mac or enjoys the Star Wars movies you know or has an opinion on them you know Um, people who love the Sopranos or spend hours lost you know listening to megadeth or you know anything it's it's so cool it's something that i feel can unite us i feel despite like our differences i feel like in some situations not a lot but in some situations you can have something as you know negative and team splitting as like something like politics or you know oh i'm a republican i'm a democrat i voted for this guy i voted for that guy and it's like oh i don't like this dude but something as simple as like you like batman i fucking love batman wait Mm -hmm. what okay you know what i can go ahead and ignore that for this like (laughs) you know but how much do you love batman i love batman a lot you know what i mean (laughs) and it also gets a little tribal too in the like exactly because you can go to like oh i'm you know i love comics i love dc you know it's like um kind of a marvel guy (laughs) like Oh, oh, really? Oh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Um, but even that, it's it, it always pisses me off with the whole, like, Xbox or PlayStation, you know? Like, who gives a shit? We're gamers, you know? I dig that. And yeah. You play PC, I play Xbox, you play PlayStation, you know? Personally, I play PlayStation, but that's because I'm broke, you know? Like, yeah. If I could afford an Xbox One, I would have had one. If I could have afforded a Switch, I would have one, you know? If I had a gaming PC, I would play PC. I'm like... We're all gamers, and like the political divide, it, it kind of seeps into our fandoms. But the cool thing is, I would rather sit around and debate with someone about who is a better hero, Tony Stark or Bruce Wayne, 
than to try and, I guess, convince a bigot why I think trans people should have rights. Yeah, <laughs> but, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you almost... not not that it's not a worthwhile fight, but some of that stuff is. I feel it's harder to. It's so wrapped up in who they are and changing a mind in that regard is something else entirely. Yeah, that's you know? that's like that's, that's a that's a whole nother conversation. It's a whole nother fucking thing. You know what I feel that is? That's an exorcism in a weird way. And hear me out, this is what I'm trying to say. When I think of the movie like The Exorcist or when I think of that situation where it's like, no, like one of my favorite scenes in The Exorcist is when they're getting ready and they're opening the Bible and they're getting their, the cloths over them and they're blessing each other. They're preparing for a battle with a force because it's going to take everything out of them. Right. I feel it's the same way when you have those kind of conversations, when you're talking about mm -hmm. someone's rights, when you're talking about you know like the right thing versus you know and whatever in, yeah and, and, and right kind of and wrong politic. it's all like subjective yeah you it's... know it's like you can see someone's point and usually it's like i see your point i just want you to see mine and there's always a side like no no i don't see your point and then but there are sides that are like no we're gonna have, but it will take so much out of you it's almost not worth even opening your mouth there's been many times where someone has tried to engage me in a political Debate. I'm like, I don't want to do it because mm -hmm. I, even if I know I can spew a ton of facts and shut you up, I don't want to do it. Yeah. But if you want to have a four hour conversation on why Batman could possibly beat the shit out of Spider Man, we can have that we conversation. Have that you know what I mean? Like, I will, yeah. I will, I have my books, I'm ready to roll, mm -hmm. we can, we can do this. But I rather expel that because in the end, I don't really care if you like Batman or Spider-Man or who yeah. you think is when. I do care if you think that, you know, homosexuals don't have rights or don't need yeah, rights. Yeah. I do care about that. And that or makes me almost and that makes me almost not want to ever know you again mm -hmm. or meet you again or talk to you again versus we can literally yell at each other on who was the better Ninja Turtle. Yeah. But in the end, it's like, that's cool. He likes Michelangelo. What a dick. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. And, and I can continue that and we can be okay because it's like, well, guess what? We both love the Ninja Turtles. Yeah. They just love Raph more. Mm -hmm. Raph fans out there, shout out. And, and when, I, when I say that right and wrong morality is subjective, I mean as far as, I guess, human stance, I think that there are definitely, like, you don't be shitty to people you know yeah, like, yeah. there's the, no reason the to like why thing. would you want to promote violence against anyone you know what's what's the point of that especially over who people care to love i think it's fucking dumb but it's that's a, that's a rougher time you know in the trenches whereas talking about you know like who's the better archer hawkeye or green arrow you know like who's or, or like us you know who's, who's the better archer hawkeye green arrow hawkeye <laughs> how dare you guys <laughs> right <laughs> I, I, uh, okay. over internet. So, <laughs> like, we could put a pin in that and have a conversation about why I think Clint Barton's a better archer than <laughs> Oliver Queen. Although I like Oliver, I think he's great. But you, I don't no, know. I don't there's, there's, there's something about get out of my house. <laughs> <laughs> I guess there's a there's a brokenness to Clint that like all he has is his archery, whereas oh. Oliver has more. Yeah. So he doesn't have to be as good. Do you know what I mean? Like, uh, anyway. <laughs> no, that's that's so deep and rough, and I love it. <laughs> It's like, no, this is but, all I have. You will right, not beat me. Right. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, so I think pop culture, uh, the reason we devote so much of our time to this stuff is because it has shaped us. It has helped us grow. It has helped us understand the world. It has helped us understand people and ourselves. And it's a lot of fucking fun. You know, it really I think, is. I think when people, like, oh, what do you and your friends talk about? You know, and I hear some stories. And this isn't like, I don't mean to generalize, but... Some people that just basically go out and drink and get hammered and kind of just talk about work or whatever um it's a little unfortunate well i guess it's not unfortunate you know, it's each their own but i really dig that people can find something to nerd out over you know i hear like i'm not a, a twilight fan i'm not even a harry potter fan you know but when i hear friends or you know co-workers or anybody get together and you hear them talking adamantly about harry potter or My, twilight uh, or any young adult yeah, series or awesome. anything any thing that they're really passionate about you hear the pitch of their voice raise and like they get excited and animated 
and that comes out of people. I hear people all the time talking about television shows that they love, um, things that really surprise them at the theater or whatever, and they're so happy and they're so excited and they're bonding with another human and that is fantastic. And what else is there that isn't like familial that would cause that? You know, I can't really think of anything that could do that. So, so I, I guess again, religion. Um, but outside of that, what what do what do we have? I mean, pop culture is what I have, I guess. You know, and I love it because pop culture takes so many forms. You can have someone geeking out about a TV show, like you were saying. Like my my niece and my sister in law, and if I if I forget anybody else who could possibly be listening to this, I'm sorry. But those two come in mind. They're the biggest Harry Potter fans. So when they have moments of geek outs of Harry Potter, mm -hmm. and I don't know, nor do I care. I still get a little excited because I like seeing them light up. Yeah. I like seeing them spit facts and knowledge of I, shit I, that I have. I don't know. I don't know anything what you're saying, but it sounds really cool. Mm -hmm. And I like listening to it. And like, you know, that Batman gif where he's, you know, giving the thumbs up next to the thing. It's like a real popular meme. That's what I think of when mm -hmm. I hear that conversation. Like I'm in the background you can't see me. I'm going to give you the thumbs up. I'm, I'm out of here. But I like I, it excites me to know that you two are having this Harry Potter conversation because somewhere down the road, me and Gonzalo are going to be having that Batman conversation or that, you know, yeah. like, I love that. That's one of those things that I, that defines pop culture for me. When people can just geek out about something, they get so excited. They're spitting facts. They're talking shit. And it just seems so freaking cool. And I love that. Yeah. I like anything that's kind of like a rarefied feel study, like um, the movie Rounders mm -hmm. uh, with Matt Damon, Edward Norton, John Malkovich. It's about um, poker players, basically like underground New York poker players, like the real poker scene. Uh, but I love that movie because it is about a very specific topic, mm -hmm. a very specific scene. Um, and I like watching and following the FGC, which is the fighting game community, I love seeing that. And the speedrunning community, these people that have devoted so much time to such a specific thing, I, it just fucking fills me with joy. I it, love that it's shit so, cool. <laughs> so much. And then, and sometimes it makes me wish that I was more involved. Like, I used to be really big into comics, and even by saying that, that's technically not 100% true. Like, I was big into the comics I liked. And even then, I was very nitpicky on what I was reading, but I still had, you know, a lot of that information, a lot of comic book stuff, you know, again, going back to like a lot of DC, Batman, yes, yeah, some X-Men stuff, Punisher, Hulk. When I hear my buddy over here talk to anyone else who's into the comic scene right now, like another one of our great friends, Eli, and they are just going back and forth about comics that are going on right now, ongoing series. I do miss it. I miss that conversation. I miss that, oh, did you read this? And it's like, oh my God, this freaking thing happened. It's so cool badass. Like, I love that. But even when you guys are doing it, even though I now feel like I'm the out man, I don't care. I still love hearing it. And then the I cool, get the cool thing about popular stuff. culture is that you are never left behind, you know, because everything is recorded or printed. You are more than welcome to jump back in. Yeah. You know, I kind of like that. And nothing. You never, you didn't like miss this performance or you didn't see that game or you didn't see that fight, you know, like, this, this, no, you like, and you could relive those and watch them, but you can't. One second, everyone. That was the doorbell. All right. Like I was saying, popular culture, uh, comics, books, movies, uh, television shows, they're all going to be there waiting for you, you know, and you can always go back and check them out you know like i didn't watch the wire until years after it had finished but watching it in its entirety i got to talk to people about the wire and they loved it too and we got to enjoy that show again through conversation you know um rick and morty was something that i came to late i came to two seasons after it had aired you know but it was there waiting for me and that i was excited really, you know that is really awesome um, you say that. i do feel like when when you finally jump on board, there's always that group of people like, you did what? You watched what? Yeah, yeah. It's like, and it's the like open fine, arms. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now we can talk. Now we can have a real discussion. And I do love that. That's one of the best things about. And it, and it goes back to what we were kind of touching on that. 
Incl- inclusivity. Yeah. yeah, I don't know if I said that correctly, but that <laughs> that awesome like, hey, you like that now too? Come on, let's go yeah. talk. Let's have a conversation. I want to hear your thoughts because, in a weird way, I'm hoping they might be different from mine. But if they're not, that's totally fine. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. and I love that. It's fun to see if they're different or not. You're like comparing notes. Like, what conclusions did you come to watching this thing or playing this game or whatever? And popular culture has led to a lot of fantastic experiences in my life. I've made lifelong friends. Like, you and I became friends over drawing pictures of fictional characters, you know, Mm -hmm. (laughs) in high school. Um, Like, some of our closer friends we have grown to love via comic conventions, playing games online with each other, you know, um, D&D campaigns, parties out where we just discussed Black Bolt and the Inhumans or, you know, any number of things seem to have enriched my life and it sucks that there is a part of it all that has ruined a lot of lives and it's unfortunate that people do get so worked up about fictional worlds, but I understand, I guess, the devotion and I can see how again to make the religion parallel that so much of who we are is wrapped up in these worlds and when someone comes along and pisses all over it or doesn't do right by us according to us some rule book that we made for a thing that we love that we don't own that belongs to everybody you know um then we get really upset you know and some people take it to an ugly air ugly ugly place but i think that's i think that's the key it's I get the getting upset but taking it to an ugly pay- place or letting it define you to a point where it's completely just covered in negativity. Like, mm-hmm. that's that's when it starts to suck. But I, I do get it. I do get when people get really passionate about something. You know, mm-hmm. you, you spend your hard-earned money or you've read all these things. You've devoted your time to it. You almost feel that there's a little bit of a, like, no, this is what you owe me. But yeah, you know, yeah, no one owes you reason. anything. Yeah. But, like, you chose to do this. Like nobody twisted your arm, especially when it comes to popular culture. You choose what you want, um, the world you want to let yourself into. Um, that's really, yeah, I like that. You choose the world you let yourself into. Like, yeah, that's, that's kind of cool. I, I, I dig all that, and I've definitely been on the side of, like, what? That's not my blankety blank. Um, as I've gotten older, I've just really enjoyed watching everything turn you know like what all the batman movies to me just feels like different eras of batman and different creative teams you're like oh there's a new artist new writer or whatever there's a new direction so i can enjoy all of them and i love watching them all you know like That's batman sweet. and robin is a little tough to sit through but it's not impossible for me you know, like, it, it's much harder for me to get through. Okay, Mortal Kombat Annihilation, the second oh, Mortal Kombat movie. Oh, God, bro. That movie Stop is it. my all-time least favorite movie. When people ask me, what's the worst movie you've ever seen? Mortal Kombat Annihilation. I think that's the worst movie I've ever seen. I think it's the worst movie ever made. <laughs> and there are a lot of fucking bad movies out there. <laughs> but I can watch Batman, Batman Forever, Batman and Robin, and be like, Damn, it's Batman. <laughs> yeah. Jason Woodruff's in the in fucking Batman and Robin. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I want to... Internet. I know we don't have many subscribers yet, but when we get to that point, and someone's watching this in the future, if you are a die-hard Mortal Kombat fan, and you can sit through Annihilation, like Gonzalo can sit through Batman and Robin, I need to know who you are. Send me a send me a shout-out. Yeah, I, would, I, would I need to, to hear that. I, link us um, in the comments. A video essay about the merits and saving grace of Mortal Kombat Annihilation. I would love to see someone would... break that movie down the way that like video essays do on the internet. Oh my god, I would actually love to see that. I would... I'm I'm ready to have my mind changed. Like I, I love <laughs> my mind being changed. I am open to it. Um Oh my god. But I, I challenge you because you will not change my mind. That movie is a That movie is really, really terrible. You we um, die. <laughs> Oh god. Okay, I'm I'm starting to think about it, and I I don't want to. <laughs> so let's, let's think of other things. Um, I, I think another wonderful thing about popular culture is the shared experience of it all. We get to know for a fact that there are other people like us out there, mm-hmm. and not in just that like, oh, you like Batman, I like Batman. It's like no, you sat through 
the three and a half, almost four hour extended cut of Lord of the Rings like I did. You spent that time and I spent that time. That's what we have in common. Not just that we like good movies, not just that we like Lord of the Rings, but both of us, independent of each other, decided to sit down and go, I'm going to watch this big, long fucking thing because I love it. Or at least I consider it worthy of my time. Mm -hmm. And that shared experience across any number of fans is pretty powerful. You know, there's something about it. It's like we could lose family. And though you and I, I think, are very <laughs> lucky in that we have a, a good immediate family. Like Our yeah, immediate families are absolutely. really strong. We have a very, very good core. But a lot of people don't have that. But what they do have is the family of fandom, you know. And instead of having stories at Christmas and Thanksgiving, we have stories of sitting outside of a Walmart from midnight until it opened the next day at 6 to be the first to get a PS2, you know. Um, You've done that. I've, I've done that. <laughs> I've, I've never done that. But um, I wish I was a part of that. I really yeah, do. So that kind of makes us family and, and i like that too and again it, it goes into like oh you don't get to choose family it's like i don't get to choose the people that love batman the way i love batman or that love the original voice actors of dbz like i do but they're there and we're all in it together you know um there's something i my, my favorite the, the thing i guess you could pull from this conversation and for me what popular culture is is very uplifting it's a unification of a bunch of fucking strangers and we all throw our hands up together and go, yeah, this thing. Right, guys? And everyone goes, yeah! yeah! <laughs> That's... And I really like that. I... I changed my mind. That is now my definition of pop culture because that's that's a hundred percent right. That that right there when oh my god, you just gave me chills because that's that's the truest thing ever. When someone goes, I did that. I watched that thing. I played that game. I read that book. I sat through a marathon of those things. It's like, oh, you did that too. It's it, it goes back to that tribal mentality. I did it, you know. It's like, did you, you know, walk through the desert with no shoes? You know, it's like, yeah, I did too. It's like, did you find that fucking scorpion? Did it sting you? Yeah, it did me too. Like that awesome connection, you know, when somebody knows. Like right now, if someone says, "Oh yeah, Batman animated series," my favorite uh, episode was, you know, feet of clay or something like that. It's mm -hmm. like and. Everyone instantly like, oh, I know that one. That was yeah, so good, yeah. you know, or that that right there, that instant. Yeah, connection. knowing that there are like other weirdos like you out there, you know, and, yeah. and you don't feel so weird all the time. Like knowing that there are other people that sat around and just could not sleep and had Adult Swim on, and they had those little bumps with the cool music, and oh, Cowboy Bebop yeah. would come on or Outlaw Star, and you're just up listening to it, and you're just watching it, and you're kind of spaced out. And you remember where you come. were to yeah. know someone know else that was doing that. A bunch of people that were doing the same thing. It's borderline miraculous. Yeah, you know, it's kind of really fucking cool. And when I think about it, like uh, now as an adult, about my childhood, that those experiences were still happening. There was a whole generation of people that were sitting in the back of a trailer or in a motel room or in a car with a couple of action figures and they were coming up with their own stories, you know, and their backgrounds were different because they were in different parts of the world, but they were right there with you and you all kind of speak the same language, you know, I don't know. It's something really, that is really cool. It's, it's what it is for me and why it means so much. I think if I were to. This is the first time I've ever really kind of like talked about why I like it so much. Because I know that I've always liked it, but I don't know why. I guess this is at the bare bones of it all. It's that. It's the camaraderie. It's the acceptance. It's the we're all in this together. We're all one tribe, you know, and it's a way to strip away all this stuff. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm a fact checker. I'm a nitpicker. I love stats, you know. I love citing, you know, well... In this, you know, episode of blah, 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 this thing happened. So that means blah, 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 you know? Yeah. I, I dig that so much. And, like, the internet is rife with that shit. And that feels like a second homecoming, you know? Like, after we went through our early 20s and we were, like, exploring the internet and finding this new version that's out there right now where, like, sometimes I lay back in my bed and I'm watching some video playlist about, you know, like, like Comics Explained or Comics Historian, right? And it's just like, this is all I ever wanted as a seven-year-old, you know, as like a 12-year-old. I would have loved to have Comics Explained. And, and now I do. Now, now I do have Comics Explained. Yeah. Now I do have, like, Final Fantasy VI speedruns to watch, you know, and, like, 
Street that, Fighter tournaments. <laughs> that that the way you are with like comics explaining stuff. Like I wasn't thinking about stuff like that as a kid, but the speed running thing. Like if I could have been a child, the way I am now, but growing up either in this era or we having or us having the internet, that would have been my thing. I was like, what did you want as a kid? It's like I just want to watch games that I either played or couldn't play, or games that I played but being played at a yeah. higher level that I never thought. That's what I was like. I've seen people play games, and I was like, I wanted to play that as a kid, but I just couldn't afford it. I yeah. never could play it. You know, it's like, or there's a, there's even been times where I've gone on YouTube to watch run throughs of games that I know are shit. Like, well, that's a bad game, but I just want to see. <laughs> Who this... got good at Swamp Thing <laughs> for the NES? <laughs> <laughs> Who did that? Yeah, exactly. It's like watch me speed run Ghostbusters. Like, yeah. why? Yeah. Why are you speed running? Roger Rabbit, it? really? Uh, okay, I guess. <laughs> I, I want to see this. I didn't get past the first part of this thing. I want to see what else yeah, is there. I immediately took it back to Hollywood Video. <laughs> just like, that would be a, that'd be a good list uh, eventually when we do our top five podcasts. The top five games you immediately took back you to Blockbuster to or back. Hollywood Video. <laughs> um, but yeah, like, I, I love and hate the question of, you know, what does pop culture mean to you? Because my first response is, I just do. Like, I love it. Like, I, what, what does it mean to you? I don't know. It, it means everything. Like, right. you know, it really does. Like, the way you were talking about the movie quote, something as simple as movie quoting, like, I'm the exact same way. I will quote movies and people don't pick them up and it breaks my heart. But when that one person picks it up and also returns the quote, mm -hmm. you were my new best friend. Like, you, mm -hmm. you were the coolest person I could ever meet. I don't care who you are, what you do. That one moment we shared something because you had to have watched it as much yeah. as I did. <laughs> You know, and it's fantastic. And I, I I feel it's one of the biggest whiffs of all time is when you quote – when you're brave enough to quote something with strangers out loud <laughs> and they look at you like, huh? And you're like, nothing. Just just forget it. That's, you know, it's, it's just – it makes you feel alive. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Like, just... like you took a chance, you know. It's like, anyone? Anyone? No? Okay. I'm going to – I'm going to talk. <laughs> and, then, and then the best part about it, I love quoting something – someone not getting it and then ending it with a quote you know and they still don't get it it's like the other day i did that i, I don't remember what the movie i quoted but i was like hey you didn't want to pick it up no no all right you know one of those fucking vegans go fuck yourself <laughs> and i walked off and they still didn't get it it's like okay not the crowd <laughs> yeah every so often like especially at work <laughs> somebody was like um who are you and they're like i'm the guy who does his job you must be the other guy and there's only one person there that gets it, a friend of mine. <laughs> and it's so funny. Um, <laughs> but, like, I, I don't know, I guess that, that's, I just wanted to kind of, like, touch base and talk about why we even bothered to start a podcast, why we even decided to sit and have these conversations and record them and put them because up. Because we love it. It's because we love it. So and much. We would do this anyway. Like, you had said earlier in the night before we started recording that why not we're gonna be talking about this stuff anyway we're gonna love this stuff anyway why not put it up you know and we can share it with a bunch of people you know or nobody you know like this is the end of the internet so like guys if you're here it's lonely but <laughs> we will be doing this forever you know if the world turns tomorrow and there is no internet if you and i are sitting on the cinders of our worlds you know our lives we're still going to be talking about pop culture we're still gonna be interested in other universes you know like we will come up with our own and we have you know like at length and that makes me excited for the future i think for as long as there's stories there's hope for the world you know in a weird way like <laughs> I, I agree because like, for every for every writer out there for every creator for any person who's made a video game a movie or a tv show music and i know we haven't really touched base on music a whole lot but we're, we're counting music in there too people but for everyone who's ever been like us and grown up and then just had either more motivation to complete their dream versus mm -hmm. or you know maybe the right puzzle pieces fell into place whatever they're getting to tell stories of hope they're mm -hmm. getting to tell stories you know morality stories and put spins on them like i always i always think that people who i feel that there's two kinds of people who like to write punisher comics there's people who are like no i want to write the punisher because they want to vent you know it's <laughs> like or then there's people who like got assigned 
to write the Punisher, and you can tell. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's like, okay, you don't get the Punisher versus, oh my god, this dude gets the Punisher well, a like, little too well. It, the Punisher's one of those characters that, like, when people try to get him, they don't get him. Exactly, <laughs> like, yeah. Like, there's not a lot to get, Frank Castle. I, I think I get him. Like, so, I feel yeah. like all the layers, you, you mean the one layer? Yeah, there's <laughs> one like, layer. There's one layer He's to Frank. Revenge. But, it um, it's cool, though, like, you, like pop culture uh, fiction art can push people to change their lives. And there have been people that were fans of this stuff, and now they're doing the stuff. You know? Yeah, because they That's wanted to so be a cool. part of it, or they were just, or like, despite how like bad Last Jedi is to me, I, I don't like the Last Jedi. But like Ryan Johnson was someone who grew up loving Star Wars, and he got to do Star Wars. That's fucking awesome. You know, like it makes me happy that like anybody, like John Favreau and J.J. Abrams, and all these people that are working on all the Star Wars stuff get to do star wars because they're a bunch of people that love star wars you know that's, yeah that's awesome like hey you get to do the fucking thing you wanted to do and maybe why you do the thing you do now you're working on it you know like i would not be surprised if a lot of actors writers producers directors cinematographers got into film because of star wars yeah and then they, they get say to that they say yeah, star absolutely. wars you know it's like not only do I make things for a living, but I get to make Star Wars too. You know, I, I, I even read somewhere, and again, I cannot fact check this, so just take my word for it. All right, it's it, you're here listening to it on the internet, so it must be true. But no, I was reading That's something about um, that there were people that were had the imagination to create technology because of stuff they saw on Star Trek. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean. Yeah. Like that's, that's science fiction has changed our living lives you know yeah. which is really cool and that's that's so fantastic to know it's like we just made that up it was just a thing we made up and someone was like and much we smarter people were like we can make that into a thing <laughs> yeah it's like you know it's like oh man this is kind of like a hololens <gasps> and then we made it you know mm -hmm. it took a while but we made it it's just it's so it's so awesome you know and and again you have to tip your hat to pop culture and you have mm -hmm. to tip your hat to creativity and people who create things for a living and who wanted to like when me and you were growing up we played with action figures but we didn't play with them like most people we were making many movies we yeah. were making stories we were writing stories mm -hmm. um as we got older you know we started writing actually on pen and paper with pen and paper and we started using typewriters and from typewriters turned into computers and computers turned we into laptops we never used typewriters i <laughs> used a typewriter <laughs> Did you really? my mom had a typewriter she had one I had of those a word ones. processor no 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 she had a typewriter because it was like yeah, yeah, she had a straight up because I I remember a, Please, you know that yeah. whole thing. No, I had a typewriter and I loved it. I missed that noise. Um, and then yes, we did have a word processor later, yeah. and then eventually a computer. But um, you you do these things because it's that how it's like you said. You grow up watching, you grow up reading, you grow up listening to all this stuff. It inspires you so much. Some people just absorb it, and some people want to return it. You know, it's like, I want to tell a story. I That's want to do like, these things. There are people that go on to make the things that they love. And then there are people that go on to be the things that they love, right? Like, yeah, there yeah, are people yeah. that are firefighters because they watch Backdraft. You know, there are people that are in the military because they watched a movie or heard the right song or read a book, you know, like, that said that's what i want to be you know like i don't want to write a story about a soldier i want to be a soldier you know i think that's top gun amazing. helped like fucking you know? the uh the 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 air force yeah i think that hell i can't remember what the hell the, the word is called but like their enlistment mm -hmm. like i think top gun had like a huge boom and yeah. like i want to <laughs> be a fucking fighter pilot you know yeah yeah and it's cool it's like you can watch something like i don't know gi joe you know and want to be someone that helps protect the world from terrorism you know like you can watch something like fast and the furious and you become a mechanic you know like and some of that may seem small but i don't think any of it is you know like anything that shapes someone and puts them on the path to where they want to go or who they want to be i think is magnificent it's fantastic and to go like oh you know my favorite movie in the world is you know my favorite franchise is the fast and the furious franchise and i fucking love building engines you know like and that's it i don't want to be a fucking actor Are you shit me i want to do that it's yeah. <laughs> terrible or, but or like a stuntman fun, yeah. or a stunt driver yeah, or all yeah, those I things work yeah. On cars, yeah you know i want to see i want to pull that engine apart and how why does it make that noise and that's fucking cool yeah i i knew a i knew a, a lady who got into like hair design and makeup and stuff she wasn't like super professional but she does good work 
And she said she got into it because she watched Jim. <laughs> nice. And yes. even though Jim was like a rock star, like it had nothing to do with that. She was like, but Jim's hair and makeup was always on point. Like that was her thing. She was yeah. like, and so she got into that's hair so and makeup. Cool. It's like, what? <laughs> that's awesome. Like, what? A, so shout out. But um, I mean, yeah, all those little things. Like, it helps. It does help shape your world mm-hmm. to a lot of people who were into it. And for people who aren't into it, you know, again, I know I said like I feel bad or it makes me sad or I feel sorry or whatever. And there's just a hint of truth to that, but it doesn't mean anything negative on how you were raised, grew up. I'm sure most people who weren't into super pop culture are probably ridiculously, you know, doing well in life right now. That it's not a bad thing, but man, if you could have just had a glimpse into the lives we led with the things that we picked up from it. I used to distill it down to art. Right? It's like, yeah. like popular culture is the common language that we speak when we're talking about art. Yeah. And we don't have to dress it up and we don't have to pay fifty thousand dollars for it. Yeah. We can all like popular culture is art for the people, I guess. And it's inspiring and anyone can do it. You know, there there isn't a person that owns a smartphone that couldn't make a movie. You know, there isn't a person that has a tablet that couldn't write a song. And yeah, yeah. That's really cool, you know. It, it's not so inaccessible. And I think that art is very fucking powerful. And pop culture is art for all of us. You know, there is no, like, what is the, like, barrier for entry? Mm-hmm. Everyone's welcome. And that, that I think is important and exciting and my favorite thing about it i think that's why we do it so much time too i think it's why we like to talk about it and as we've said before it's because it's a lot of fucking fun it, you know yeah. it just it's a lot of fun <laughs> I I someone at work today and said oh, oh i thought i heard a song and it sounded like when uh, anakin skywalker was fighting darth vader and i was like anakin skywalker is darth vader <laughs> and then the two other people behind them was like that was real quick, man. You didn't even breathe. You to... Yeah, it's <laughs> like, like I was like, I, and then not like you know, <laughs> it's cool. <laughs> it's cool, guys. It's cool. Like, like my fault. I just you know, I'm just being dumb. <laughs> um, I don't know, even that. You know, like even someone who has a very distant understanding or knowledge of any one thing has some knowledge of it. You know, and it's kind of cool. It's well, and and again, it's like. When people say that the whole, you know, like having so much knowledge in pop culture is kind of useless, like it's, it's, yeah, it might be useless in certain things. It might be useless in like practical usage, but I, I am not a smart guy. I barely got through high school. I'm not someone who wanted to go to college, unfortunately, and I'm suffering for it now. But my fiance who went to college and is extremely smart always has these little moments where she looks at me stupidly and like not stupid like i'm stupid but she looks at me and like you're so fucking smart like how Mm -hmm. did you get this smart or how did you do this how do you know and that's like pop culture honestly like to be a hundred percent honest like playing a ton of video games watching a ton of movies i have learned almost a common sense like a a a sixth sense of common sense you know (laughs) like I, i i picked up so many things so I might not be the greatest in the book smarts, but when it comes to just like life and, you know, I've had so many people tell me that when I am discussing, you know, somebody's outlook, like somebody's, you know, the way they might be thinking or the way they might be feeling and, or I can tap into somebody, I have that, you know, the empathy with that. Everyone always kind of freaks out about this. Like, how did you know, did you take classes? And it's like, no, I just watched a lot of cool TV shows Mm -hmm. and read a lot of cool comics and I played a lot of cool video games it is to a degree in education you know you get exposed to different philosophical theories uh, different lifestyles different voices um, different ways to view the world different ways to live within it that's really cool too it's super important and especially for those of us that don't have a lot of money and don't get to travel a lot you know we don't get to be outside of our state often or whatever but we get to be transported to the other places and it's really important you know and like you said it's shaped you and made you a better listener a better talker a better human being and it really it really has i know like we don't have enough podcast time to go through that but i mean it's it, it really has um one of the things that that really always clicks to me when it comes to what you what you're talking about right there one of the things that always gets me 
is I almost feel like you get to live a thousand lives in this short life that we have because you're taking in so much from music. You're taking in so much from the movies and stuff. Like, you get to live a million different lives. And if you just pick a couple of those and really dive into those lores, it's like you're living longer. You're experiencing life that... It's like I you, never... you, were, you were part of the fellowship. You know yeah. what I mean? It wasn't like you heard about this story. It's like you were on the fucking trip with them. You know? <laughs> yeah, and I always I always find it funny when someone like wants to shit over something that's really popular. It's like... Fucking two hobbits taking a ring to a volcano. It's stupid. And it's like, no, it's it's a brutal fucking journey of two best friends who are basically like... That's Sacrificing all they themselves to save the world. Yes, exactly. <laughs> it's it's like there's so much more to it. And that's the other thing too. Like people who grew up like us, people who love pop culture, um, who really like sink their teeth into all this fictional stuff, they really have a way of putting those themselves in a story. Mm-hmm. And... People who aren't like us don't do that. You know, like there's been many a times where I've watched a movie with people who don't do what I do. And they're like, oh, that was pretty good. And then we have a conversation about it. And I kind of, I do the little, the little nerd moment where you're just diving into it. And it's like, well, that's what this meant. And this is what that meant. And like, could you imagine feeling that? Could you imagine? And then when you start putting in perspectives that they understand, it's like, well, what if that was your kid? Mm-hmm. And they're like, oh, shit, I didn't think of it that way. It's like, how did you not think of it that way? Yeah. Like, that's the first thing I thought of. Like, you know. But that's, I mean, that, that's interesting. You know, it's like to, for someone to watch a movie and not put themselves into it. Yeah. Because you know, like, that doesn't necessarily mean anything to them because they have other concerns. There are other things that will reach them, you know, and that's super interesting. I like the difference in opinion and view of the same thing like it is a very stark reminder that we are all individuals like i remember having a conversation with our friend eli and i thought the first time i saw wally i was like oh wally's it's a masterpiece they hardly say anything and you know they get so much emotion and the story and this and that with very little dialogue very little speech and the first thing he told me was like Man, I feel ripped off. I want a refund. Man, there's hardly any dialogue in it. Like, who got paid to write write this thing? Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, it was so funny. It cracked me up because just the way we saw it, you know. Yeah. With the same factor involved, you know. Like yeah. The minimal dialogue. And we viewed it two different ways, two you know. Two completely different ways. But both very passionate about it. I thought that was really funny. <laughs> yeah, seriously. I, I'd like to go on record that I agree with you on Wally. It's fantastic. Wally. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> seriously. <laughs> I did want to just kind of like have a conversation with you on your thoughts on pop culture, what it's meant to us, and why we will be spending a couple hours out of our week, every week, for the next year at least, on this stuff. Well, did you have any final thoughts? or? Um, no, honestly, the, the only real final thoughts I can leave you, you know, the internet with is... I'd like to know, and we're going to have a, a Twitter coming up. We're going to have different avenues where you can contact us. There's obviously uh, email, and of course you can leave a comment under the, the video. We know what it means to us. Maybe some of the answers are a little more vague and some were very clear, Gonzalo. <laughs> but um, I want to know what, what you think, Internet. Like, anyone listening to this, like... A couple of things, just a couple of lines. Like, what does it mean to you? And what was what's something that defined you? You don't have to give me the, the complete, utter story of what it was. But, like, for me, you know, Batman obviously defined me and Gonzalo a lot, you know, to a point where, like, I... Yeah, if we literally had half a penny for every time we said the word Batman in our daily lives, we'd be multi-billionaires Seriously. by the end of the week. <laughs> I, I literally... I... I, I literally follow some of my my moral compasses by Batman and what he does or in stories that have been told. Like I know that sounds ridiculous, but it's like for me, like Batman, the Legend of Zelda, these are things that not only define me, but I I, I almost create like a little weird like mix of religion in my head. It's like if I could create a church like these would be on the cathedral walls, you know, they'd be a beautiful image of Batman and, and Link and Princess Zelda, like there would be these things that because they define me so much, they mean so much to me that they help shape me. I'm just kind of curious, a couple of things, a couple of characters, maybe a, a, a piece of, of of music, what, like what you found interesting, you know, a little engagement, maybe we'll even share some of that next time, but what about, like, that's all I can really talk about, because I just want to keep talking about Batman. Um, <laughs> but what about you? Like, what do you, what are your final no, thoughts No, I think that's where basically my thoughts on it all is just, 
how it can bring us together, how it can change a human being, how it can change a family and a life. Um, all of that is interesting. Emotional connection. And, yeah. Um, I, I, I just, I'm utterly fascinated by it. And I love that almost since day one of mankind, we've been telling stories to each other. Yeah. And we will continue to tell stories to and with each other. Um, and pop culture is just another avenue. And hundreds of years from now, when this society is completely different, we'll still be telling stories. As long as there is life like us on this planet, we'll be telling stories to each other. That's a really good thing. I think it's going to usher in the next era of awesome. You know? <laughs> Um, that was actually really pretty. <laughs> but um, thank you guys all for listening. Uh, you've reached the end of the internet. My name is Gonzalo. And I'm Marcus. And uh, we'll catch you guys next time. Have a good night. Thank you.